What is going on, my Houston Texans family? I am your host, Ruben Calavillo. You guys could find me on YouTube dropping daily Houston Texans content. Just type in 713 Houston Sportcast in the search bar. I am also a part of Believe in the Houston Texans on Spotify. I'm going to drop that link down there below. Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter at 713HSP. The NFL draft is approaching us, ladies and gentlemen. And Nick Casario spoke at yesterday's Combine and. I have to say I am very excited for this draft coming up, and it feels like the rebuild is on the right track. We're going to react to whatever he says and kind of see if we can get a glimpse on how the Houston Texans are going to approach in this draft. I am already seeing on Twitter right now that the Houston Texans have met with defensive and edge rusher Will Anderson. That is very surprising. Let's go ahead and start with this press conference from Nick Casario. I'm excited for this draft. Andy, hopefully we can have a few productive days here. Um, uh, our coaching staff actually stay back in Houston. Uh, D'Amico will be here a little bit later this afternoon. We just felt the best thing for the new staff was just kind of stay back, kind of work on scheme, kind of familiarize ourselves with our team, continue to work through that. So um, try to be efficient. Pause right there, right? This was a very fun topic yesterday to discuss on only Nick and D'Amico and maybe a hand selected of their own scouts right there at the combine instead of the whole coaching staff, right? If you're sports radio six and they do a great job covering the Houston Texans, we're on the show, Huey and Clinton. We're absolutely outraged, you know, that you know that not the whole coaching staff was there to look at these prospects. But I see the other side, and I do, you know, see the side where Nick Casario maybe wants all of his coaching staff to get acclimated to Houston, get acclimated to the building, and just know, hey. We are the two honchos here, right? We trust you guys enough to be on your own to figure out the scheme and whatsoever. Let us get you these players and let you work. You know, I have no issue with only Nick Casario, who has so much VP experience, right? Going back to his times with the New England Patriots and our new head coach, D'Amico Ryan's only being there. With our time, try to get uh, um, some work done here. I'd say our college scouting staff done an awesome job at this point. Lip, Tom Hayden, Zeke, John, I mean, the whole group. Um, They've done a lot of the heavy lifting at this point. So, um, you know, try to maximize our opportunities here this week and then uh, head back to Houston here later in the week, get ready for free agency, and uh, keep building the team. So exciting uh, exciting time for the team, exciting time for the organization, exciting time for the city. So let's try to keep building um, on some good days here and keep stacking a few things together. So take some questions. Go ahead, John. You can start off. Yeah, we're really looking at the entire kind of team building process. So we've kind of started with our team, uh, kind of had uh, D'Amico and the staff had an opportunity to look at our team. We know we're going to add to this position. We have one player on the roster currently. I'd say it's probably going to be a combination of draft to free agency, could be to draft, could be to, you know, however it goes. So we're going to look at whatever resources we have available to us, try to make the right decision. But really, it's about the total team building process. It's not really about one position. So we're going to be very thoughtful. He was asked about Davis Mills, and not once has Nick Casario or D'Amico Ryans in these past couple of weeks have mentioned the name Davis Mills. Davis Mills has not been anywhere as far as advertisement for the Houston Texans. He wasn't on the, you know, on the New Year's post. He wasn't on the Valentine's Day post. He wasn't on the uh, welcome, you know, welcome home coach, even the season ticket advertisement did not have davis mills they're not even mentioning his name right and they're saying that they will add to the position in free agency they were added this to this position in the draft it just sounds like year three and the book is closed on davis mills thoughtful we're going to take our time to try to make good decisions um, all throughout the spring man it's just davis mills had every opportunity man to have this in front of him and he squandered it in my opinion yeah i don't think you're making decisions based on data you're making decisions based on what you think is best for your organization and your team so i mean we have 50 players on a team give or take um so we know we're going to add 40 players to the team so you'll probably add i don't know 15 to 20 for agency give or take maybe a little more maybe a little less probably a little less right now we have 11 draft picks so call it 10 to 12 draft picks and then however many players you sign after for agency so Again, philosophically, and D'Amico and I feel the same way. It's really not about one player. It's not about one position. It's about building a good team. And if you have a good team, that gives you the best chance to go out there on Sunday and have some success. So that's what our focus is going to be. This is not twice that D'Amico Ryans has mentioned for agency, right? Going back to last year, this was the year 2023 
where he himself said that the Houston Texans will be going to spend some money. They have 36 right now million dollars to work with. That is, I think, I think eighth in the NFL right now. So the Houston Texans are going out there and they are going to spend some money. Man, I do expect some potential big names, but we all know the real money of that 100 million plus doesn't kick in until next year for the Houston Texans. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Um, you know, he was going back and forth there a little bit. So uh, I tell you, that first week kind of got a little taxed. But he's been very, uh, very open-minded, very thoughtful. Um, we kind of take our time. Really want to think through decisions as we assemble the coaching staff. It was a big part of it. Have a few candidates here. Talk to a number of different candidates. All right, let's, you know, he wants to sleep on it. Give it some thought. All right, and then come back. All right, yeah, that makes sense. What about this? He's very open-minded. Uh, we have a lot of open communication. There's been a lot of dialogue. Um, we actually met as a staff yesterday offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. We kind of went through their evaluation. We gave him some free agents to look at. So wanted to hear the staff's thoughts. D'Amico has very his thoughts. I have my thoughts. And we're really going to try to blend everything together here as we're going through. So he's been great. I mean, everything that I think that I heard or knew about him beforehand has come to fruition. And he is who he is, so I think that's the one thing you want to see. Like the things you experience during an interview process, then you're actually see him firsthand up close and personal, and it kind of matches. So it's been great. I mean, I, the honeymoon period is probably over here a little bit. Now we got some work to do, but you know, it's been a lot of fun to come in the office. Um, the staff has been great to work with to this point. So we know we have a lot of work in front of us. Nothing's going to happen overnight, but I mean, it's great. It's been great to have him around. It really has. It's been a lot of fun coming into the office. I'm pretty sure Nick Casario couldn't say that the past two years with Lovey Smith and David Cully. D'Amico Ryans is going to be really good for the Houston <laughs> Texans, guys. Yeah, it's becoming more and more commonplace, I would say. Really, you want to try to be as healthy as you can by the end of the season and have your best players available. When you look at the teams uh, that were participating in the, off, in the uh, postseason, that was the case. When you look at Kansas City, we're looking where Philadelphia ended up. So... I would say the whole sports performance, injury, I would say, component of your team, we put a lot of time, a lot of resources into that. Um, and it's really about giving the players the best opportunity, making sure that they're resilient, making sure they're durable, and making sure they can go out there and they physically can perform the job that they're asked to do. Injuries are a part of the sport. And so what we need to do is build a team where if we lose a player or two here or there, that we have some supplementary pieces in place. So I think uh, – holistically the league is looking at that it's becoming more and more commonplace and i think teams are and organizations are allocating more resources to that particular area i love how he talks about death man how many times have the nico yeah i mean i think there's a number out. of players that He'll can help different good. teams um they come in different shapes and sizes so i think in the end you got to decide like what's important what do you prioritize i'm not going to tell you what that is but what's important to you and how you build a team i think when you look at what Philly did, I mean, there's a good example of how Shane and Nick kind of built their team, built an offense mm -hmm. around what Jalen did well. So really what you want to do with every player on your team is what do they do well, what are the things that we can give them to do well and give them the best opportunity to do that. So really that's the focus. It's not one size fits all. So you have to figure out what, what do you value, what's most important, and then build your team accordingly, and then give that player the opportunity to go out there and perform, and don't ask him to do something that, quite frankly, he doesn't do well. You know, I like that Nick is looking at other teams' success and trying to somewhat not really copy it, but moderate it. All right, uh, you know, we had some Texans fans call us. You know, the the new 49ers with the amount of staff coming from there and the amount of you know players potentially coming from there. But you want to look after what works in the NFL, and the 49ers have been successful. The Eagles have been successful. They've won two Super Bowls in the last what six, seven years. You have to look what works now in the NFL. And shout out to Nick Casario for doing that, man. Yeah, good question, Sarge. It's not necessarily team needs. It's really more player-specific or player-driven. Um, I think a lot of teams have had success in kind of rounds five through seven and then post-draft or agency. So the same process that you use with the early round picks, you apply to the end of the draft as well. And I would say we probably allocate as much time and resources to kind of the, those players at the later end of the round, at the end of the draft, than we do at the front end. If you can't figure out the players on the front end, we got bigger problems, right? So once we can mm. kind of put a player to bed, we're of the thought process, okay, let's move on from the player. We kind of know what that is. All right, let's focus on the next group. And then we have certain... If you cannot evaluate 
the beginning of the round and the good players, you're not doing your job. Players graded at certain levels, kind of that later round. We're not a round-based team. We're kind of numerically based where we grade a player for their role. So there's a role commensurate with their value. So we try to identify the line of demarcation, drafted, not drafted. But that grouping of players, really between now and probably the draft, that's where the next two months we're going to put as much time and resource into that group because how you you can build a team a number of different ways and those players are sometimes uh, as important because they're cost effective and they can kind of supplement some of the things you do at the front end of your roster. So say we take a lot of pride. I don't want to speak for other teams in the league, but I think the teams take a lot of pride in being able to find players in the late rounds because it just goes to show you there's good Damian football Pierce players that are literally throughout the draft and you don't want to limit yourself and say, well, if we don't get this guy in the first round, then we can't put a team together. I think that's probably an inaccurate characterization. Go ahead, Aaron. Man, hearing Nick talks about the draft, man, just makes me excited. Knowing that he spends just as much time, maybe more at the back yeah, end of the Yeah, I think there's a lot of good defensive players that are available in this draft, like there is most years. Um, you know, I think that's an area or position. I mean, we're going to we're gonna look at um, the way D'Amico plays defense, the way Madden and D'Amico want to play defense. So, like, do we have the players that fit that style? If we don't mm -hmm. have the players, where are they? Okay, are they in free agency? All right, they have certain traits and characteristics. All right, let's go try to find some of them. All right, who are the players in the draft that fit? Not every player is going to fit. So just because the guy's a good player, maybe one system, all right, maybe he doesn't necessarily fit what we're trying to do. So that's part of our job, part of our responsibility, to try to find play players that fit how we're going to play uh, philosophically, both offensively and defensively. And, you know, can't forget about the kicking game because the kicking game is just as important um, as any. And I'd say that's probably one of the areas we've had a lot of success over the past couple of years because we devoted time and resources yeah, in this important area. phase. The past and that thought process and mindset is certainly not going to change now. It's not a fourth, fifth time he's mentioned for agency. Yeah, I'd say Rockets we're kind of in the team money. building process here. So every player, every individual situation, we'll look at it, and then ultimately we'll you know we'll do what you feel is best for the team, and the organization moving forward. I was talking about Brandon Cooks. You know the the, the whole thing about Brandon Cooks it still irks me because this was a guy who you extended in the off season who said I want to be here. And flash forward, not even a full calendar year later, it's I do not want to be a part of the rebuild. He was liking pictures of him in different uniforms right before the trade deadline. This is a guy that had the captain C on his jersey, and the Houston Texans had to strip that away for him after him not really playing, not not playing for us against the Philadelphia Eagles. Brandon Cooks, who I was excited about this offseason, man, he really let me down. And this is one of the guys that, you know, that the Houston Texans wanted to invest in and they gave him a fat contract, an extension and flash forward. He doesn't want to be here. And now you're trading him. You could have traded him by the trade deadline to the Dallas Cowboys for a second pick. But now you have to deal with it in the offseason, man. Good riddance, Brandon Cooks. Dude screwed us out at the number one overall pick. That is insane. Yeah, I think we're focused on the Texans. We're not necessarily worried about what other teams around us are doing. I mean, mm. you're cognizant of that. But ultimately, you have to be prepared to pick wherever you're going to pick and then be prepared to pick whatever player. So I'd say most teams, again, not to generalize here, but most teams, wherever they pick, you probably have three or four guys that you would feel comfortable taking. So if a team is in front of you and you're only talking about one player, well, that's going to leave two or three other players. So you're either comfortable with that group of players or you're not. So... Again, you can't really get too caught up in what other teams are doing. You just try to make decisions that you feel are best for your team and your situation. Nick Casario is talking about the possibility of a team jumping you to go to number one, the possibility of the Bears trading down. And I said this many times, and I said this months ago. If the Houston Texans won that game against the Colts, if they were to win, which they eventually did, it would haunt them up into the Houston, up into the Chicago Bears, because now we know who's picking at, an, at number one. We will be nervous until we see what they do, until we see who they select. You lost control of this draft by letting Brandon Cooks play. That was head former head coaches Lovey Smith's final F you to the Houston Texans. You heard DJ B enemy tweet that some players in the locker room were talking about this being their Super Bowl. The Houston Texans now, until right up until draft time, 
have to live with the idea of a team jumping them and taking Bryce Young or, who, or whoever the hell they want. Nonetheless, when he talks about it, if another team takes your player, well, there's three other guys who you like. In the top four to me, it is Will, it is Jalen, it is Bryce Young, it is C.J. Stroud. Are any of those four the ones that Nick Casario, you know, would love getting? I wouldn't mind either one of those. Nonetheless, you should have lost that game to Indy. In terms of which way, John? I mean, what are you? Yeah, I mean, look, we're trying to have good football players for the team, however we do it. So there's a cost associated with each player. Um, I'd say sometimes players make it to free agency for a reason. So mm -hmm. are you playing, paying premium dollar for good players? So what's the cost-benefit analysis there? So if that's the right decision for your team and that uh, player is going to make a difference, then we're going to go ahead and do that. If there's other options, then what's the alternative? So free agency is about what are the alternatives, what's the cost associated with the player, how big of a commitment are you willing to make, what's the role you're going to have. And I would say we're very, you know, let's say specific about role relative to value. So if they match up, great. If there's a mismatch, it's like, you know, spending too much money on a car that you know you can get cheaper, right, mm. that can do the job just as effectively. So. Again, our philosophy isn't changed. We're trying to add good players, however we do it. There's a cost associated with every player. So this is the time to kind of evaluate the market and kind of see where players, um, where they fit. I mean, you all can have followed the league long enough. I mean, how many times a year or two after free agency? I mean, it's the greatest free agent signing ever and then a year to cut in a player. I mean, so I don't think we want to be in that situation because it's not a good use of resources and capital. So try to make good decisions, try to add really good players to our team that can help us. And we're not going to change that, you know, in terms of our, what our philosophy is. In terms of free agency, I like what he said there. I'm not just going to, you know, just spend kind of foreign name. You are a free agent for a reason, just like what he said. The way I would approach it is I look in the ages of, you know, of 27 to around 30 in my areas of need. When it's the offensive line, and I've addressed the offensive line as saying that the center is huge for the Houston Texans. I've mentioned Garrett Bradbury, uh, the center from the Minnesota Vikings. Bradley Bozeman, the center from the um, from the from the Panthers. Right, he signed a one-year, eight million dollars deal with them. That those both those players, 27, 28 years old, I would pay a good price for you know for Bradbury Bozeman. Like I said, he only signed a one-year, uh, eight million dollar deal. You could work on that. But in other areas of need, right, and I talked about backup running back. I don't think you would have to spend there, right? And some of the names we saw yesterday get cut, Lennon Fournette, the safety uh, from the Cleveland Browns. I think those are kind of the players that he's talking about, right? You're being cut for a reason. Free agency is going to be interesting for the Houston Texans. I think you need a center and another defense. Go ahead, Aaron Middle. The Aaron Payne, he got franchise tagged yesterday. It looked like Hargrave might be franchise tagged as well from the Philadelphia Eagles. So, the Houston Texans will have to change the board pretty soon. Yeah, what I would say is really the draft kind of takes on, it's very similar. There's going to be groups of players, certain positions that have more players than others or more supply and demand of some positions relative to others. But there's good football players littered throughout. I mean, you go through the league, you know, Stephon Diggs, okay, where was he picked? He was picked in the fifth round, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he wasn't a first-round pick. So there's a lot of good players throughout the dra draft. Our job is to know as many players top to bottom both the front end of the spectrum as well as the back end and in the middle and just try to figure out like how are we positioned i would say we're positioned right now as we speak in a pretty good spot you know two ones or two two threes and then uh, we have a four so what is it i don't know five or six picks in the top 7500 or whatever it is so you would think that you're going to find good players within those areas so that's what the focus is so kind of what i alluded to a little bit earlier it's not about one player it's not about one position it's not about one pick it's kind of about building your team and trying to find players all throughout five seven picks in the top 100 and you know nick is is going to trade up he's just going to be wearing when he's traded up yeah we'll look at all that we actually had kind of a trade chart simulator you where know. you factor in the points and what's the cost associated with it i would say everybody it's twofold <laughs> Some teams kind of have an analytically driven chart. Okay, here's what that summation of the numbers is, and then you have the old Jimmy chart. So I think most teams are still using the traditional Jimmy chart as a, a reference point, but each team has their own sort of model. The issue you have is you're trying to do a trade, 
their model says one thing, your model says another thing, so we're like speaking two different languages, so how do we find a resolution? So we'll run some, t I think that's a little bit more of an exercise we get into April, right, we're positioned here, what would it cost to move up one spot? Okay, we're at 12, what would it cost to move up a few spots? What would it you know, cost to move back? So we'll look at all those. I mean, February 28th is probably not the time to do that. I love the fact that they're talking about trading already. You know Nick is, if he likes a player, he go get him. He traded up for Nico. He traded up for Christian Harris. He traded up for... Um, yeah, I mean, I've never talked about timeline. I've never talked about rebuild. You know, what we've tried to do is each year, is his own entity, kind of look at our team, try to build a team for that year, focus on 2023. You know, with an eye to 24, I think we've tried to, I've tried, I've talked about this, try to really look at it in sort of two-year windows. So 23 and 24. How are you positioned, draft capital, players under contract, cap space, all those types of things. So it's kind of a moving target. So you have to be you just be ready to adjust and adapt as you go. So I think the more flexibility you have, I think that's really what kind of our mindset has always been. Two-year window. And as I look to my friend Jacob over here, shout out to him. He's uh, working out about to drop a, a, a TikTok, you know, about the gym stuff. Nonetheless, he said two-year window, 2023, 2024. And he says, what do you have? Well, you have 11 picks in this draft, Nick Casario. You couldn't say that the past couple of years. You have, like you just mentioned, Nick Casario, six picks in the top 100, five in the, you know, five in three rounds. You look at the, the cap space where well, you have money now that you didn't have in the recent years. The Houston Texans now have every single asset and resource available to them to now fix this Houston Texans team and fix this roster. If this is the two-year window where it is right here, right? You could throw away the past two years with David Cully and Lovey Smith. You were fixing the mess that Bill O'Brien left. You were dealing with the Deshaun Watson fiasco, and I'm not even going to get into that. This whole situation hasn't been easy for Nick Casario. So if this is his two-year window of 23 and 24, you have every single asset available to you to make this team a winning football team. Let's go ahead and do it. Drop your nuts. Let's make some noise out there. We all know how much fun it is watching Houston Texans football. We need that back here, man. The rough next are making. No, you said it right there in the question. It kind of gives you some optionality. So, which you don't necessarily always have. So, we've kind of created some optionality for ourselves organizationally. But in the end, it's about what do we do with those picks, with those resources. So, we can have all the resources in the world, but if you don't use them wisely, and again, the draft, and we've talked about this, <laughs> there's an element of chance with just about every player that you take. So, I don't want to say it's a 50 50 proposition, but in some respects it is. And then the later you get, <laughs> the percentages go down. So, I think we've positioned ourselves in a pretty good spot so what we do now in terms of our actions will be more important than anything else nick casario's composure from right now to his final press conference at the end of the season was absolutely different dude was much more paid yeah you're looking at the profile of the player and sometimes it's some non-football related things like their work ethic their mindset how do they take coaching their willingness to improve you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it, being a really great player. Are they committed to being great? A lot of people talk about being a great player. Is the player actually committed to being great? So the physical is very important, like how well they play on the field in the end. Like, that. Are they actually committed to being great? And I think that's one of the great reasons that gets me excited about D'Amico Ryan's being here. When D'Amico Ryan's was talking about Fred Warner in his, you know, in his press conference, he talked about him being a married man. And stuff like that really shouldn't matter in the game of football. But to, but to D'Amico Ryan, who he himself is a family man, a Christian man, it is the little things that matter to him. It is the little things that make great character. And D'Amico Ryan is going to tell which one of these players actually really does want to be great. And he is going to come to this Houston Texans locker room and look at our boys and say, how many of you really want to be great? Because we just won three games last year. That's what people care about. That's what's going to make them a good player. But there's so many other things that go into it. So our job is to evaluate those traits and characteristics and make sure we're identifying the players that have the right qualities. D'Amico's talked about this, the swarm mindset, that whole mentality. So that's going to be pervasive throughout the organization. So trying to identify and find players with that mindset. And the more types of people and more types of players we get in the building with that mindset, then it'll give ourselves a better chance, hopefully. 
That is the D'Amico Ryan's effect. And this is what we've been talking about, about better days being for the Houston Texans. You heard Nick Casario say in this press conference, it's been a fun couple of days at work. And you heard him just say right now, we are going to take that philosophy uh, that head coach D'Amico Ryan said and swarm, and we're going to do that in the organization. The sense of urgency that was not there the past two seasons is there, and it is not getting contagious among the fan base, guys. <laughs> That's a very articulate way of saying that, but it, it, it is. Like, how important football is to the person matters. So... Mm. Everybody plays, but in the end, they're transitioning from, I'd say these players are transitioning from, okay, they've gone to class, they've gone to school. This is your full-time job. This is a full-time commitment, and honestly, it's a year-long endeavor. So are you committed to actually doing that when the season's over? What do you do? What's your process? Do you have a routine that's in place? What are you doing to proactively recover? There's so many things along the way, and when you look at some of the great players over the course of our league and history, you know, I mean, everybody obviously talks about how great of a player Tom is, but everything that Tom put into being a great player sometimes isn't talked enough about. So players like Tom, players like Jerry Rice, we're talking about arguably two of the best players in their position, but there's a reason that they had such longevity. So not everybody is, is wired that way. So are there players that have those traits and characteristics? They're out there. Our job is to kind of find them. And I think what Brandon said, their give a crap level, absolutely matters is, an import, is important. Sounds like Bryce Young to me. You go to his Instagram, it's nothing but football. First part of that question. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, it's a space game, and it's really it's a it's a multiple receiver, multiple defensive back game. So I don't know what the percentages are. You guys can probably look at it. It's probably around 70% nickel defense. So nobody plays base defense anymore, right? So how do you handle the different personnel groupings? So you're trying to defend space horizontally and vertically, and teams are really doing a good job of, say, implementing some of the concepts in college to our game. So trying to stay ahead on some of those trends. The league's constantly evolving, and I think you, we, we have to evolve at, at our end as well. So how we evaluate players, what we evaluate, what we put, put a premium on, all those types of things are relevant. I think that was the last one. Yeah, thank you. And as Rip... There you go. Sorry about that, boys. And as Nick Casero ends his press conference here, I think we got a lot of good tidbits from him. What we learned is that the Houston Texans... They want actually very committed football players. The love for the game is going to be questioned in every single one of these prospects. And I have to say, when you are a Houston Texans team and nothing went right for you and you only won seven games in the past two years, will you need to be so will you need someone? You need this group of boys coming in to be nothing but football dedicated. Nonetheless, guys, this is the reaction to Nick Casario's press conference today. Were you excited? Were you not excited? How do you feel about the incoming NFL draft? You guys let me know. As always, go Houston Texans, and you guys have a very blessed day.